Hi everyone, welcome back to Hope and Coffee. Coffee, Hope, me, whatever. <laughs> we are having a brilliant day and I'm just sitting here as I was like thinking about things to talk about with you all and trying to think about what I have or haven't done in a little bit and as we draw to kind of towards the end of September, this weekend, I think it's the first official day of fall and I'm already trying to think about what I want to do for Halloween. What if I want to do a costume or what have you? Um, I definitely do. I want to find something to do for Halloween. Have not figured that out yet. Um, I realized I have not talked about a book in a hot minute. And that is something that I was kind of surprised about because when I was kind of looking back, I was pretty consistent through August about giving kind of some little book blur book reviews about different things that I um, was reading and reviewing and talking about on the podcast and stuff like that. And I don't know if I just got distracted or what because I have still been reading a ton. I just have not been talking to you all about it. Like I will kind of give you guys like a rundown of the, um, the books that I'm kind of like on deck but apparently I was not really talking to you guys about like books that I was actually finishing and the ones that I would highly recommend. So the one that I wanted to talk to you guys about that I just recently finished and I think it's on, oh, you know what? It may have expired, but let's see. Let's double check and see because it was absolutely fun. It was absolutely good. And I'm checking my net galley shelf because I just finished it like two days ago. And I'm so glad I did because I think it's already gone. Um, so this is my net galley account. And it's got all the books that I have requested uh, that they have more or less approved me to receive ooh, ahead of time. And here it is. I want to show it to you. I've already read it, but it is. A Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Hand. I just finished it and I um, absolutely thought it was brilliant. So this is going to be my little re Well, I turned that off, didn't I? But this is my review of The Haunting on the Hill. And it is not so much like, it's not a sequel to The House on Haunted Hill or The Haunting of Hill House. But, um... It is in that same vein, and I am trying to pull it up on The Haunting on the Hill book by Elizabeth Hand. And the reason I want to do this is I want to be able to give you guys some of the stats on it when it's expected to release and those sorts of things. So thank you for bearing with me. <laughs> but, all right. A Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Hand currently has about 4.0 4 stars on Goodreads. And I definitely give it actually a five-star review. Now, this book is um, inspired by and returning to the world first, um, first created by Shirley Jackson and The Haunting of Hill House. This is the first ever authorized novel to return to that world. So um, this is authorized by that um, the Shirley Jackson estate to uh, revisit... Uh, Hill House and I loved that and I don't know if you've ever read um, The Haunting of Hill House but that is Shirley Jackson's work from I think about like 1956 absolutely brilliant utterly creepy gothic uh, gothic fiction but also thriller uh, very psychological there are there's like a TV show that's kind of in the same vein, same theming of it. There's a movie. There's lots of different iterations of it. And that's for Shirley Jackson's work. So this is the first book that's kind of been released according, not not according to, but um, that almost follows, it's not a sequel. Like I said, it's not a sequel. But it revisits that world. It revisits that house. So it's different characters. Um, again, Shirley Jackson's had four individuals visiting the house and some caretakers. Again, we get a very similar. We get four visitors to the house with two caretakers. The two caretakers will not stay the night um, because 
There is just something about the house that they will not stay overnight. Um, this house has been passed down through, you know, generations of family. They've tried to sell it. It's like not really worked. It's fallen through. The sales have not gone through, those sorts of things. Um, but this book has so many of those fantastic gothic vibes that eeriness that Shirley Jackson is able to put into her books and able to put into her story that um, I think Elizabeth Hand just does a fantastic job not recreating but echoing. I think she does a fantastic job with giving us the nostalgia of what, what we had in that first book. And that's what I really enjoyed about this book. So in my personal opinion, I gave it five stars because it was exactly what I was looking for with respect to revisiting that world. So they brought it into a modern day setting, um, into a more modern day time with characters of a more modern day situation. And then were able to tell a story that was familiar, but new, eerie, but still unsettling. We still had all of those paranormal vibes, um, very psychological in nature because you're not sure at some points, if it's the house or if it's the people, you're not sure if these individuals really have a psychosis or if it's really the house doing these things. And so a lot of that is really left up to the reader once again to kind of interpret. And that's something that I kind of found with Shirley Jackson's work is some of the things within the work that she would, I guess, you know, describe going on, you could almost interpret as, well, if, if this person didn't hear it and this person did hear it, did it really happen? Or is this person mentally unwell? Is it a psychosis? Like what's going on? So you kind of have these different questions of, because everybody in these stories has their own quirk of um, what's brought them to the house, why they're here, and a little bit of unraveling for each individual. And so nobody, I guess, is what I would say pure or clean. Nobody is kind of untainted by stepping through these doorways. And I think it's absolutely fantastically done. I am I think I give it more than four stars. Like, well, like I already did give it more than four stars, but I was actually surprised that the other reading population only gave it the four stars because I um, truly think that it's a perfect fall read for this fall season. Uh, it was very quick read in my personal opinion as well. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit spooky, a little bit eerie, um, light some candles, turn on the light, turn down the lights, um, get you a cup of something warm, maybe a glass of like wine or whatever your favorite beverage may be. As mine is, it's usually coffee. Um, but I think this would be a really great psychological sort of thriller. Um, again, not a lot of, there is some action and there's going to be some question. There's some mystery. There's always going to be those like what if, what happens? There's going to be some unanswered questions and there's going to be a little bit left hanging because that's the world of Hill House. And if you watch the TV series or if you watch the movie, that's the world of Hill House is unanswered questions and everyone kind of walking away wondering if it was more of a nightmare. And um, But there's still those lingering effects, uh, effects of kind of like, well, it definitely happened because certain things are still true, but, you know, it's, you know, but other people out who were not there during the time try to justify it in different ways. But anyway, I would love if you would give this book a read. If you would give this book, I don't know if it's an audiobook form or not. I had an advanced reader copy from NetGalley, and I am so thankful they let me have an advanced reader copy of it. Um, I left my review this morning on NetGalley and I wanted to be able to provide also this video. It comes out October 3rd and it will be released uh, hopefully in most available bookstores near you. So in whatever form you choose to find it, I hope you will. And I will see you all on the next page.
Have a great one.